Ja, da sind wir wieder. Oh, we, we want to speak in English, don't we? <laughs> okay. Oh, But yeah, we, yeah, yeah. We were going to speak in English. That's yeah, right. Not in German, because we are Germans and we want to talk about our upbringing, our life in post-war Germany as we were born in the 50s. It's a long time ago. And I know. Gosh. <laughs> what happened? What happened? Hey. We so, are, let's yeah. first say who we are. So who are you? What's I'm Heidi Hörnlein. <laughs> and I'm Marianne West. I used to be Hörnlein until eight years ago. Yeah. And I really shouldn't have changed my name, but whatever. I'm West. Yeah, I, I changed my name first time when I was um, 19. Mm -hmm. And then when I divorced after 12 years, I thought, who am I? I'm not the one from before anymore. I, I'm not, I don't want to be the one with the name of the ex-husband. So who am I? And it took me a long time to come back to Hernline, to our birth name. Mm. So, but now I'm back. So, <laughs> I, And I don't even put that much significance into names. It's just, you have to change so many papers when you change your name. It's just a nightmare. So, yeah. Theoretically, yeah. I could also have called myself Davenport now. Mm. But, and I think officially on the, on the wedding cert certificate, it's, it's Davenport. But I choose to stay with Hanline because you cannot change your identity every now and then <laughs> <laughs> well some people do i used to have a friend who changed her name like almost every day mm -hmm. and you had to go like well who are you today <laughs> <laughs> and in reality I, you kind of remember the name you meet a person with that's the name which sticks unless you constantly see them in in a different um, yeah. in our context, whatever. So yeah. let's go to, to the topic as um, people who see the recording sooner or later will see we, our windows where you, they can see us are embedded in a picture and the picture is our mother having you as a little baby on the lap. I'm oh, so standing cute. on the left oh. behind me, our brother Rolf and on the right side, our brother Hina. And the last one wasn't born yet, so he came five years later or three no, years no, no. later? No, 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 it's three years later, five years, three years yeah. Later. I was five yeah. years after you, and then uh, Wolfgang was three years after me. Yeah. So I think both of us were real big surprises for our parents. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, mother said later she didn't really want to have so many children at the beginning she wanted even more you know oh. but then after you have the first or the second she said oh it was enough but she sort of couldn't avoid to yeah to, to have the, all these children i so. know i had i had the idea that i wanted six children too and <laughs> i stopped after three actually i i was influenced by the book i think maybe people have read because well it was made into a movie as well called cheaper by the doesn't and mm -hmm. so it was oh, about yeah, yeah, family yeah. that 12 children and they were all into being very efficient which i think kind of speaks to our german race of being efficient and organized which i'm not but whatever i mean i am and i'm not but that's that's a different topic <laughs> <laughs> or maybe it is a topic we will explore later what what that is all about yeah. um so, yeah time when we met we talked about uh, the difference what it was in these times that in our house there was no washing machine at the beginning it, they, the washing machine came with your arrival into the world and before the women had to to go down the three staircases in the in the cellar and heat up a big um what is Water it kettle. Kettle, yeah. yeah but a huge one and had to wash their things there and then there was no spinning thing you know i i remember we had the close presser what is it the pressing thing uh it's like something, a something a like a I yeah, oh, man. See, I'm so bad with pronouncing words because I have seen it written many, many times. So I probably totally mis mispronounce it. It's a, a wrinkle, I think. And it it's is actually, something, a mechanical thing, which you put uh, like uh, wooden sticks round or, or like a barrel, but uh, with, with um, sort of one centimeter, two centimeters um, empty space in between. No, they are all round. 
going like this. And then from on top is a sort of a, a winding thing and you can turn it around and there's a plate pressing down. So that was the spinning machine, you know, and you so really had are to you, Are you talking about spinning while it was in the water or after? No, no, after the water. water. When you had done the washing, you had to, okay. to spin it with your own muscle power. You okay, know? so what, what we, uh, what I see here a lot, it's actually where it's like two rolls and you feed the piece of clothing through and you crank the handle and it squeezes, uh -huh. you know, the water out that way. So no, I don't think yeah. they. I've they, never uh, seen it. I wish we had more pictures of all of that stuff. You yeah, know, we didn't I, I, have photography then. I mean, we, we could ask our brother. He did for what he was already big, about 17, 18. Then he did the well, photography and he had his, his laboratory of black and white photography and he developed the photos. Maybe he still has some of these things. Yeah, I mean, it would be good, but those were such mundane subjects, and I feel at the time nobody was really into the old stuff. It was like good riddance, <laughs> you know, it wasn't something you, you photographed or paid much attention no. to because everyone was so happy to get rid of it. It's like yeah, after yeah, sure. another 50 years, it becomes, uh, you know, worthy of remembrance or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's that's like interesting well i just finished nanowrimo which is national novel writing month and i ended up i wanted to write about some completely different and ended up just getting stuck in all kinds of childhood memories which was kind of interesting to me but i also realized how much i don't remember because you know we don't have so, a lot of pictures and we don't I don't know. I, I, um, maybe I didn't pay attention. We were so much forward thinking, you know, wanting to not be involved in the old. I think we were maybe of a generation where it's a shift started that you don't revere the old anymore, but you look forward to the new development because I feel yeah. there used to be much more reference for old age and for the experience which comes with old age. And, and I think that has shifted now that old people like us, <laughs> which we are not old yet in, in, you know, in today's standards, we are not old, you know, but um, which, you know, people which are aging are more obsolete now. What do you think? Do you feel like when we grew up said, you know, there was a, do you feel there was a shift happening or is it some, I'm just kind of, um, you know, like putting onto the situation and was actually not there. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. I, I, I think people were considering themselves old much earlier. Oh, that's for sure. Yeah. And for so, sure. and they, they belonged sort of better to the families, the old, uh, <clears throat> older people. So you so had you to mean sort they of were more integrated into in somehow, somehow at least, you know. I remember now it's Christmas coming, a second day of Christmas. Uh, the our uh, grandmother came from the. Um, she was in a sort of a nursery home now, and then the aunts came, the the ancient aunts, <laughs> Tante Erika and Tante Mayana, and we had the one goose for ten people or even more. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody got a little bit of, of me. Well, but. but you know, I mean, that's some I, I wrote a lot about how yeah, we tell, were just way more careful about food and, and having this, you know, abundance of meat. Everybody now thinks, oh, you have to have it to survive. It's like, no, you know, no. people did not have that. Tell, tell a little bit what you remembered and... Uh, so I get it too. Well, and I, I have 50,000 words of remembrance. So <laughs> it's, it's a lot. And actually I was, uh, I do want to fill it in more and then, you know, we could, I can share it with you and we can use it a little bit as a basis of this. Yeah, just I, if you begin to, to tell something and maybe yeah. I, I remember something to, to that so, too. So actually, one of the things I was writing about was our Aunt Erica, which was really wow. your godmother. Okay. Oh. <laughs> yeah. 
And so there were a lot of details I didn't quite remember, and maybe you can fill them in right now. So what I remembered is that she lived also in an older house, and I think it was even more flights of stairs. So in our house, we had three flights of stairs. The first flight was 11 steps because that was up from the basement, which didn't have quite as high ceilings as uh, the rest of the flats. In the olden days, uh, the flats were really, really high. So the basement was about as high as, or maybe a little bit less high as our normal rooms are now. And then the, so what do you, it, it wasn't, well, you would call it the first floor, but it was, today, you know. It was not called first floor, but yeah. today you would see it as first floor. So the yeah. first floors, the ceilings were extremely high because it was just a lot more representative living then, you know, the furnitures were big and, and all of that. So it was the second floor and then the third floor, which is where we grew up for most of our life was actually already with slanted uh, ceilings at, or walls rather, because we were right under the ceiling. So, so under those the roof, were, you would say. Under the roof, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. uh, so we had 11 steps, 21 steps and 21 steps, I think. To, oh yeah. yeah. To get all be. the way up, yeah. So on Erica, I think she was on the fourth or fifth floor. Because it, I, I seem to remember that it was more, more steps going up to her. There was only four or five steps, uh, sort of going around to the first, uh, what we could say, first floor or ground floor, and then there were other three, and she three was more. in the so third, in the also floor. halfway under the roof. And oh. you need to know that the roof is not flat. The roof is like. You know, yeah, things like that. Because it, it's no, it's it's no country, so you need a house that's land to to get the snow coming yeah. down. So, and they had the, they, what we call Erker in German, where the roof is coming down, but then there is a, a flat piece of facade going out. I don't know how you say it in English. Yeah, Erker. I don't know. We have to look it up. So yeah. we are both going to learn new words here because. Yeah. <laughs> So what I'm finding is my German has started to be really lousy because things I have learned in English, I don't even know the German words for. But there are a lot of words late, and, and especially when I was doing this writing, there were actually then words which came up in German and I didn't know them in English and I had to send them to the translator. And it's like, I'm doomed. I can't speak any language. Oh, no. Yeah, that's the problem when you live in several languages, I do, and it's really difficult. I live in three languages, and you know what's the worst thing is? When you uh, file your things in the computer, mm -hmm. and then you don't know in which language you have, uh, uh, you have it. filed it, <laughs> then you, you are looking for the things, and you hardly ever find them. That's, it's really... So there's tagging in place where, where you have to put tags on everything. Yeah, I, I don't know even the text then in which language is it, you know? I, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, yeah. It's a, a drama. I, and I'm but not very orderly online. <laughs> I'm, I have to say that you always had a lot more language challenge than I had. I'm, I'm good in a particular given language, but I'm not really good at jumping back and forth between... Mm -hmm different languages and me neither. Me neither. I don't know you it seemed like said when we were growing up you you know you had Latin you had Greek you had French no I didn't have Greek I had, had French uh, but now oh, okay. I have English I have uh, German and Italian and it happens to me when I have to jump from one language in the other I it's hard it's really hard and I know people who can do it easily and they mm. I put words from the other language in the language I'm me using too. So, me too. It's and it's really, like, yeah. and it sounds like really normal to me. And people like look at me like, "Who? Oh, what are you just?" <laughs> yeah, sure. That was good when I was with Mark. He knew a little Italian, right? And uh, so when I didn't know a word, I could tell him in Italian, and so he could give me the English translation. Right. And now my English gets worse and worse because I cannot ask anymore. That's... Well, at least we are going to hang out once a week and speak English. Yeah, so, that's so that's a good thing. But so anyway, so you, so I remember getting up there and when you uh, get to her front door of the flat, 
uh, you kind of came into a, a kind of hallway, but it mm-hmm. was kind of a, a little room in the big font, right? It wasn't just like a, a corridor type of a thing. Yeah, it was first a, larger, and the, from yeah. there were two rooms on the right, and then you on the left room, the side was her room where she was stitching, where she, she right. was a professional. Yeah, embroiderer. Embroiderer, yeah. yeah. And then you got, went ahead, and on the left was the kitchen. And the kitchen had one tap, one water tap, and what we call called Ausguss, a little, you know, not a really sink. It was just a, a like round. Like a small and, basin where you could actually, yeah. yeah. yeah and you couldn't wash down. dishes and things like that. It, it was just you could wash hands maybe underneath of yeah. that and take um, containers and fill, fill them with the water. That was all. And then going further ahead, there was on the left side, the little toilet. There was no bathroom. I remember bathroom. the toilet. It was just yeah. the toilet. And ahead, I think there was the room of Auguste. Auguste was her mother. Oh, see, I don't remember her at all. So oh, she was, she looked like an old witch. <laughs> probably she was, I don't know. She was, uh, she seemed to me very, very old, but probably she was not, um, but well, she, but she must have been because I mean, how old was uh, Aunt Erica? But of course, to us, they all looked super old. They looked so. all old, but I don't think she was too old. She might have been, when I was small, she might have been maybe end 40, 50, something. Okay. Not too okay, old. So, so I don't remember her mother at all. So her mother was living with her and she was taking care of her mom. What was her mom doing? I mean, sort of. So her mom, uh, I don't know what they were living from, probably from the embroidery, but they also had in the two rooms they had there, they had Heron. They had uh, men who were studying at this uh, sort of high school uh, for architecture, which we had then in in Coburg. And, you know, like students, and they they rented out the rooms for for the students. And that actually was how i'm that's kind of what i remember said our grandfather was boarding yes. there yes, and that's exactly. how how he met our grandmother so what was the connection before you becoming the Bretzfeld. godchild the Bretzfeld. the Bretzfeld okay. family was connection some um, relatives the family of our mother and so they also had a connection with this lady. And so... Do you remember how, the connection at all? How how's that came about? No, I don't know. But uh, we have somewhere, we had, and probably Wolfgang has not, uh, a booklet that was in the secretary of our mother. Was there a booklet which uh, explained a little bit the, um, the connection of the Pretzfeld family with our oh. family? So maybe we have to ask him to take pictures of that and yeah, you know, yeah. put it online. And, and I know in our childhood, Bretzfeld was still a name. And sometimes I remember that we went up, they lived behind the station where it goes up a little bit, you know, but, but on okay, the street. Which, which station? And, uh, uh, the train station behind. Oh. Okay. You know, where now the big street is, there was a tiny street and they lived in a house there. And I remember to have been there twice and they seem to be sort of different people or maybe higher social status. I'm not quite sure, but uh, we were not there very often. And um, it felt to me as if we were not really belonging to them. But that mother well, went there sometimes to, for whatever reason, you know. To be I like think, a relative. Yeah. Well, mm-hmm. I, I think, you know, and I wrote about it and I thought about it, said, you know, where so we, our mom grew up was upper class upbringing. And then having said many children, I don't think that was socially very accepted at the, the time. People, Yeah, you know, and also the marriage with our father. He was not of the right social class, you know. Right. He came so, from, also, he had uh, studied and won uh, the, the um, um, how do you call it? 
when you get money for to go to university where oh, you don't have to pay. all right uh, i'm trying to turn on some light here because I'm okay but i can see you that's a, okay yeah now you can see me again yeah <laughs> i think uh, that's it, better uh, so he won. Uh, see, now I'm thinking in in German, and I can think about um, scholarship. He won a scholarship. Scholarship, exactly. Yeah. He had a scholarship for the university. Also, he came from a family of a carpenter. No, our grandfather right. was a carpenter, and he, because he was sort of smart, they recognized it and sent him to the high school. To so. So he got a scholarship to go to gymnasium already because I was wondering about it because to usually, gymnasium I don't know but to university he got scholarship because it's usually it seems like you know kids of working class families were kind of pushed into staying working class by the systems that you had to go after fourth grade into gymnasium to be able to go to university later. And people were like, we can't afford to pay for you for 13 years going to school. You know, you need to learn a trade and, and go. So, so I, I always was wondering how that happened that early in his life that somebody, because that wouldn't have come from his parents to, to send. No, him to no, me. no, probably not. I don't know. I don't, I don't know that. Maybe he had a scholarship already before. Who knows? But I know yeah. about the scholarship and university and that it, then it was tragic because he had studied for one semester and then he had to go into the war. Oh, and so he had started his, his university yeah. and then he had to yeah, go to the Yeah, war. and he liked it. And, uh, but then Not he, the war, he liked to study. He hated yeah. the war. And then he had to go to the war. Then he had, I think, he could come back after a while, maybe after a year and could do another another semester, another half year. Mm -hmm. But I'm not sure about that, but it, it sort of is in my memory like this. And then afterwards he was completely in the war, then the war was lost and he then came when he well, came he was back. a prisoner of war too for a while. He was a prisoner of war. He came back, I think in late 46 and they had already married uh, our parents. And so in 47, the first uh, son came. So he had then to, to be the breadwinner and find a way to, to, to get money. And so he went in a quick course to become a teacher, a uh, um, primary school teacher. And that's what he did. And for a long time, I think he, he earned 100 marks or something uh, a month uh, in, the, in the first years. And we, I remember, I don't know how it was with you, but I remember we really didn't have a lot of money. And what we ate, we had Sunday, we had meat and klöse, no, which are the, the potato balls. Dumpling, which yeah. take a lot of work. They're delicious, but they yeah, take a lot of work. Yeah, that was the Saturday evening, Sunday morning occupation of the women of the house. Yeah, yeah. but it was really good. And uh, the, the rest of the, the week, I remember, we all liked schinken noodles. That means uh, yeah. pasta noodles with, uh, um, with tomato ham. paste and tomato onion. paste and onion and cooked ham. And for seven people, we had 100 grams of, uh, of ham cut in little pieces, you know, so that sort of the pieces of ham, you couldn't even taste it. So, so, so little was it. Well, you had a little bit of a flavor. Yeah, we, uh, we were fishing like, uh, you know, see, for that. Yeah, I was, uh, I was wondering if, I mean, I, I know that uh, people our parents associated with who only had one child did financially much better but I, I wasn't, <coughs> I'm sorry. I wasn't sure if we actually were as poor or if it was more the consciousness, um, you know, or the worry of our mother who had grown up in, in such a very different um, situation to now deal with, with this. You know, if, if, it, if we were particularly poor compared to the rest of post-war people oh, that may be not but uh, she i know she had all uh, ground uh, still inherited um in uh, the mushberg property. property property yeah mm -hmm. 
And uh, she said she had to sell all of that for to feed the, the children. And we had, at least I remember it well, in the evening we ate bread with margarine mm -hmm. and apples. Mm -hmm. You know, there was nothing really exciting. We, we ate the fruit of our garden. Yeah. And she worked a lot in the garden to, to have us eat vegetables and stuff and food and, and whatever there was. But we didn't have the things we later had, like like sausage and, and, and cheese and so. I can't remember that. That was I, I can still too said it was a lot less uh, you know, later when once our dad was uh, mayor and all of said our life became more opulent. But you know, I I do remember having very simple foods, which actually I feel is a plus, you know, because I think people are just eating way too much rich foods um, today, yeah, today yeah, sure. you know. But let's get back to Aunt Erica because I was really interested in that. So, so there were two rooms on the right, or or just one. I I saw there were like two rooms towards the right. We never really went to until I, how much I once or twice slept there and so I remember these rooms with the wooden beds with huge feather beds on top you really right. huge, huge huge and uh yeah I think there was one or two beds in in both in one time the Erica was sleeping because her mother was in the in the back in the other room so they had four rooms all together one kitchen and the toilet yeah mm -hmm. Yeah, see, I remembered that the kitchen was also way in the back. So I was, mm -hmm. I, but I never really went so much. But I do remember that it was very uh, stark. I spent some nights there too, when you had uh, some kind, oh, you had whooping cough. Uh, and, okay. mm -hmm. and I was being quarantined to Aunt Erica's at the time. Uh, you had to go there. I wasn't aware of that. Uh -huh. Yeah. I was there for, and I, I'm pretty sure I had to spend the night there. I was quarantined twice. One time I was at the Fishers for, who was like a war, uh, a war friend of our dad's. They had a farm in, um, God, what was it? Away, yeah, in the yeah. south. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, now I forgot what what. Swedish high. Baby shawl, exactly. Mm -hmm. And I was supposed to be there for two weeks. And then I don't know if you were sick or if uh, Wolfgang was sick with some, some kind of disease you don't necessarily want to catch. And I ended up staying there for like six weeks or like a long time. I just remember it was a and long time. And how old were you? I was probably 10 or maybe, I don't and know. How did it work out with school? Did you go to school? Then? No, it was in the summer vacation ah, okay. time. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how it worked out that I was censored to begin with. You know, I or don't remember that. I don't, I don't remember why I was censored. Maybe I was just supposed to stay there for a little bit. You know, I mean, I know said I was going to suit twice on uh, holidays for teachers' kids. Mm -hmm. And so maybe, you know, they they had offered to, to give my mom some break, you know, to have a few less kids. I'm assuming that was like the reason that we were sent on holidays, you know. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Not sure, so sure. much for it. That we would get a holiday. I mean, I'm sure that was part of the reason. But I think the main reason was to just give my mom, our mom, a little bit of an easier time, you know. So yeah. anyway, so back to Tunde Erica. So... So we both remember that somehow our grandfather got connected to our grandmother through being a boarder there. And from what I remember was that he was uh, older, but said our grandmother was older for that time, you know. And oh, she was almost 40. She was uh, 38 or something. Oh, really? That old? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. She, then, my, our mother was born when she was forty. Okay, so and so her brother was two very years rare. Older, very or was her unusual. brother younger? Mm -hmm. Was uh was he now older, uncle he now older or younger than our mother? He's younger, two years younger. So she got her babies with forty and forty-two. Oh wow! Okay. 
And probably, you know, in those times when you were in this age, you normally would be considered a spinster and you wouldn't get any any husband anymore. So probably she 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 took what she got. <laughs> right, right. And from you know, it's a little bit we know about our grandfather is that he was not a nice person to to be around. So so anyways, but we can get into that later. So, so then was Aunt Erica ever married? Because I seem to remember there was some kind of a husband. There must have been a husband, but we never saw him. And she was sort of uh, all the time. I don't know what it was. She had something with men. And maybe she was still... I don't know how she she lost him, but somehow she was alone, as long as I know her. But there must have been a glorification of men and a denigration of women in her mind. So uh, I remember that as the, always, it was always that I as a girl was not really valid. And I had to, you know, be as she wanted me to be. And uh, then when she talked about men, that was always like, you know, like if they were gods. And then when I had Andreas, my first husband, she did em embroidery, a mm -hmm. cushion for him. And I didn't get anything, but he got. And she was always sort of pri privileging him uh, over me. And that was her... Who knows what this poor woman had had lived? Because altogether she was like a tyrant in my in my uh, in my eyes. And I had a long time in my life, ten years and longer. I was when Tante Erika came up. I was sort of oh, no, no. Yeah. No. Well, she. I remember her as an extremely negative person. Mm hmm. You know, but, and, you know, just remembering, so, and again, I might be completely wrong, because as I found out, said my memories have, like, huge holes in them, like, huge, you know, but from what I remember, like, Thursday was ironing day, and yes. said, so mm -hmm. aunts would come, someone after coffee drinking, which in our family was not coffee and cake, but, you know, so on Sundays it was, but. But I'm always, I'm always saying that that's the thing I miss about Germany is coffee drinking <laughs> in the afternoon. That was it's just very special. So anyway, so they would come, and then it was time to iron and to get everything done right and you know fold it just so and all of that stuff. And I always yeah. remember that Aunt Marianne would come and we all would be very happy and get our little saving picks and go penny, penny, penny. And she would give us pennies and stuff. So I don't know if you were a part of the penny crew still or if you were already too old for that. I think so. Because I think Wolfgang and I were kind of like, we were the little ones, you know, and you Wolfgang were kind had of... to had to work with the island too or only you? Oh, I don't remember that. Mm -hmm. uh, he was three years younger. So, yeah, sure. but Aunt Marianne was his. Uh, yeah, his, she was great. She was. Yeah, his was, godmother. Yeah. So you know, I mean, she I do a, remember the two of them always being there, together yeah. and being such a different presence that we looked forward for Aunt Marianne to come, and. She, Aunt Erica would be like, oh my God. She was, yeah, t uh, Aunt Mayanne was sort of the way to, to, to get over the day <laughs> because of the other one. The other one, the, Aunt, Aunt, Erica, Aunt Erica, she was really, you know, the underwear, the ironing was not anymore done by hand, but with a big machine where you had to put the things in and it was yeah. by the by feet. And our mother was sitting there, and even the underwear was uh, ironed. And then, oh, if I didn't fold it in the right way, you know, and put it on the right heap in the right way, and you, that uh, you you were blamed all the time and attacked because you were not right and you didn't do it right. And I actually already then I thought, why would you, why would you iron underwear? Yeah, it goes yeah. better into the wardrobe. Yeah, okay. But maybe you know, it makes me think. Maybe 
It's still the reaction on Aunt uh, Erica because I have my underwear and things all in a in a drawer without any folding, without any, it's just zoom inside because well, it's it's, it's easier. It's easier, but I, you know, that's uh, something I saw for us to explore too. I feel I have a lot of realities in my life today which are unconscious. Uh, you know, um, how do you say it? So not revolution. Yeah, maybe let's call it revolutions against all the pressure we had put on us as we were growing up. And I always think about, um, you know, our mother, because I think I, and again, I don't know, but I'm just speaking for you. I think a lot of the things we have done is duty driven. You know, I find said said we have been very much, imprinted as doing our duty and it's much easier to take care of others and of ourselves and you know all of that kind of stuff and i wonder how much our mother's life was only duty and how much of it you know i mean like the aunts were they actually really a help or were they a burden or was it a little bit of both? Like, so, you know, because they were physically helping to get through all that crazy amount of, of ironing. But at the same time, you had to endure the criticisms, uh, whatever, you know? Yeah, and I think it's the same thing here. Tante Mayana was a pleasure to have around. And Tante Erika was, I, I'm sure she didn't like it, but she, she knew she needed her because... Uh, you know, getting uh, along for seven a seven people family, it's not easy. And then you still had to do all the washing, all the ironing and all the stuff. It was normal that you had to do it every week, you know. And so I think she just um, accepted her help in some way she needed it. And she wouldn't have dared to say, don't come anymore. Well, I and uh, I think part of said so, it, but it also was, you know, providing her with a family, you know, Aunt Erica, and with yeah. with you know people to be with because I don't think she had uh, much of a social uh, circle. She no, saw she people didn't. because people came to drop off work. You know that that was her thing. She was hand embroidering monograms and stuff into sheets and whatever and she would do embroidered tablecloths and pillows for people and, and stuff and make uh, make lace. Yeah there was a, a woman and I think she they were related. Frau Höch. Yeah Höch was then the I think this that might have been the ex-wife of a brother. Because she was called Höch, but she was not a sister. So maybe there was a brother existing before, which we never got to know. And she lived in Weitramsdorf. I thought so Höch was a relation to her husband. So Aunt Erika's husband. Ah, can also be. But then why is this woman there? Which woman? The Höch. The Frau Höch, where she went to often. Yeah, I, I think that was that was like a, a, a niece or something of, of Aunt Erica's husband. Maybe. But I could Maybe. be wrong. I mean yes. that's that's all yeah, I was I was writing about said how when we were sitting around because you know the aunts would stay and have dinner and all of that and then a lot of times I mean, we did learn a lot from them because they were instrumental in, in teaching us how to crochet and how to knit and how to embroider and how to do all the things, which a lot of people this day and age do not know. You know, I mean, no. we, we really have a huge amount of practical skills, uh, including baking and cooking and, and all of that, which... That's a true. lot, a lot of people do not know. But uh, a lot of times, so sitting around days were kind of like, you know how uh, in all history, history is being uh, kept alive by keeping telling stories over and over and over mm -hmm. again. And mm -hmm. I feel that they were telling a lot of times all the relationships and laying them out 
And I feel I never listened to it because I thought it was extremely boring. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly boring. I remember that too, that they talked about X, Y, Z, but actually, no, I don't know what they talked about. I think Tante Erika talked about the Höch family sometimes. And so maybe maybe one of our others, uh, brother, and it's really not that important or yeah. maybe even interesting, but what I find interesting is that I feel that we are kind of on that, um, uh, and I can't think of the word right now, I will later, of course, when, when I don't need it, but, you know, that generation was still more living in the oral history, you know, oh, of, absolutely. Absolutely. of remembering poems, of being able to, uh, you know, at any given time, give you, what is citat in English? A quote it's out a of, a, it's a quote, yeah, mm -hmm. out of like a Goethe or a Schiller or whatever. And I can't do any of that because we... I, we had to remember some poems and recite some poems in like fourth grade and fifth grade. But after that, it's, yeah, forget it. And now with the age of the computer, you look everything up. I don't know anybody's phone number. You know, it's like, yeah, I don't remember any of that. So, so I kind of feel they are telling that was part of the history they were living with, that you just kept those relationships in mind which is actually a good thing. It's good to know who you're related to. And I feel, I don't know how it is in Italy and Germany, but here is um, uh, uh, ancestry research is huge. You know, people mm -hmm. spend tons of money and energy trying to figure out who their ancestors are and doing DNA tests and, you know, just all this stuff because I do think we want to kind of know where we are coming from, what mm -hmm. our roots are. And yeah, of is course, we're headed to us and we, we just went like, bleh, don't need it. Yeah, it's <laughs> easier for us, that I think, when we were sort of more confined and the marriages were nearby, while America, as I have found, Mark had found a map with a color coding of where people say they identify their... Um, their ancestors from and Germany is all over the place, you know. Oh, Germans, yeah. Are, yeah, it's it's Germans have been, you know. I mean, uh, when you really think about it, what is Germany? You know, it used to be all those little dukedoms which were mm -hmm. all over the place, and there were lots of people. Uh, I did a DNA test, and apparently, I came over here in a migration of the 1700s, so. So there we go. <laughs> Pretty old. <laughs> yeah, the, the 70s, you went in the 70s, and but not in the 17s. <laughs> well, I guess a lot of people with my gene, uh, you know, history came yeah. at that time. And I should look at it a little bit more. Uh, but, you know, it's I, I got it as a gift, and I thought it was quite, you know, interesting. But... Yeah. Obviously, to get deeper, then you need to pay a membership, and then da 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 da, da and I'm like, nah, it's okay. And they won't you know? find the. I think it's easier to find that in Coburg, and we did a little bit. Uncle Hina did quite a bit of research in the ancestry, and there there exist uh, some books about uh, also about oh, the. We should the talk Van to Karen and Klaus because. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe they have it. The mm. the family which came from Chile and the 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 um, uh, trading companies, uh, one in, I think, in London. London. Yeah, that was a relative which something. didn't want but, to, to have anything to do with us. So, or, yeah, that us, was a, yeah. Let us go back to the duty thing. I think okay. you, you have touched on something very important, which today is sort of almost lost. And as history goes in, in, in waves from one side to the extreme to the other extreme, we were still in the duty extreme. And now I think it's in the non-rules extreme. So that's, it's, it's both not good. So yeah, like a, think, a medium. <laughs> a yeah, medium we, we need to find at the end, probably it will balance itself, but that uh, in our time, we were still, uh, let's say in the, in, in an area era, era, which hasn't had um, these, let's say, progressive values yet. We were not yet 
um, uh, educated in a sense, e, e ducere, uh, getting out what the child is inside, but we were still drilled. So my, I, I heard that um, the education book up to, I think, the 70s of the Hitler time was used, you know, and mother... Oh, really? I had yes. no idea. And she, she used it for us. And she told me once, uh, in that book was written, when the child cries, let it cry. Don't, uh, you know, don't go in and don't uh, take it on your arm and things because they have, it's a sort of still this ideology of breaking the, the will of the child and to, to dominate it. And that but was- then, there was said, a guy here too, Dr. Spoke, which, which was like, I, I think that has gone around in so many different societies too. Yeah, 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 yeah. That yeah. was the, the, the time of authoritarianism, you know, traditional authoritarianism, which was still very up on vogue, which now is, you know, we have now other levels of development uh, online. So, but then it was not yet especially not in places like Coburg, maybe in big cities, they had already the modern mindset of, of trade and of production industry and stuff, which in these little places was not. So we were mainly in the traditional mindset and our mindset in Germany was still very military um, influenced, no? because uh, ob obedience and doing your duty. And I think our mother doing her duty was the main thing she, she, she did. And so in later life, when she didn't have any duties anymore, she, she couldn't find a purpose in life. When we were gone and she had no garden, then she had the dog, but then there was, the dog was not there anymore. And without duty, she never had learned to, to live for herself. The joy of it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so, you know, that was a sort of an, empty life then for her in many ways. She lived up and the children came, maybe with their children as you did and, and the others. And that for a while was still something she, you know, she could enjoy. But then she thought, ah, oh, now she has a duty to provide X, Y, Z. So that I think it was always a sort of a binary thing. Yes, enjoying, but then there was also the duty. So she never, I think she never could really let go. She never learned that and she never could uh, pay attention on her feelings because that was, that was just not allowed. What you want and what you feel and you know, well, you have to maybe do. maybe it was just too painful. I mean, if she would have been like, let, let's just assume, said, if she would really have thought about it and go, well, I didn't want five kids and just scrub and, and cook and do all of this all day. And what I really wanted is whatever, travels the world. And then you look at your life and you go like, oh, I did that part, you know? So maybe it becomes too painful to look at the things you you Yeah, pass, from later you know? on. I think at a certain moment when you are so used to, to have a certain way of life and you never had the support to, to find a different, a different perspective, then you just can't anymore. It's, 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 it's just impossible, you know, because you know that and nothing else. So. Well, there's this thing, you know, said you can only imagine... No, that you can only do things if you can imagine it, you know, like yeah, if, you, if you don't even think it's possible, then you're not going to be able to do it. I mean, even if you think it's possible, it's, it's not like a hundred percent, you know, way you said you can do it, but if you don't even think it's possible, it's certainly not going to happen, you know? Yeah. So, and in those times there was no creative thinking about how life could be different. That came a little later with the sixties. There was the challenge of, uh, of, uh, how life would be, but the young people, our parents already had, uh, almost grown up people, almost. But you uh, know, she did, she did go and explore like different things. I mean, she was into health food and she was into, yeah. you know, anthroposophic ideas, which, which were kind of different from, you know, so because like, uh, you know, the thinking of Waldorf and so forth is much more child-oriented and much less uh, military Prussian 
Yeah, but it was not so much Waldorf. I think it was Kneipp, and Kneipp was on the in, uh, late 18, uh, 1900s, no? So it was yeah. not very new. It was still a sort of a tradition thing, but with a different content, yes. But, and also uh, very disciplined. Because, yeah, very uh, disciplined, yeah. <laughs> Kneipp, yeah, you have to go in hot and then in <laughs> freezing cold water. I mean, I did well, it so many I, times. That's, but, that's yeah. like the sauna thing, but you know, you get up in the morning and walk barefoot in the dew and the cross and stuff, which means you have to get up in the morning to begin <laughs> with. <laughs> so you can catch the dew, dang. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, so, so yeah, Tunde Erika. Yeah, so we both kind of remember that Cloud, what, what I kind of would be interesting to know is, or I think we kind of already know why people ended up being so bitter and, and you know, because... Like today, when your expectations of life don't meet reality, and then you have the choice, or become bitter, Bitter or to change your life, you know, and life changing then was really much more difficult than today. I it think was it was not really impossible. I mean, yeah. there, there yeah. were people which did and could do it, but like you said, we were even before the border to East Germany happened and we were really on the outskirts of, of the country. Um, I mean, it was positive and negative in a way too, because like on one hand, we, you know, Coburg did have a lot of opportunities, maybe other places didn't have just because of all the connections to the different royalty and all of that. So I don't want to say it was really backwards thinking. And I kind of also want to oppose your idea a little bit that we were in trade oriented because there were a lot of small manufacturers in, in that area. Small, small, but not the big yeah. ones, like in a big city, you know, that was not yet the modern mindset with big, making big factories and stuff, you know, we were still more in the traditional handicraft thing. Uh, yeah, some words. I, know, think, I, I see as a positive, really. I mean, I, I feel like now that's what we need to get back to. Because... Yeah, no, I see it in the levels of development, which are clearly goes from the traditional to modern, and from there to the uh, postmodern, which we are mainly in now, you know, uh, where we become sensitive to to ourselves and to others, which is in modern, not yet, you know, you just do and do and do and get rich as possible, but if you hurt somebody or if you hurt yourself in modern times was not yet. And even less in traditional times. In traditional times, you did what you had to do and what was expected from you. Right, right. No matter if it cost yeah. you your life. And I was not. thinking about um, when I did a course, the Enneagram course uh, for five years, and uh, in one of these years, there was a clairvoyant. And she told me, I did some session with her, and she told me, when I was born, my parents already shouldn't have been together anymore. And she said, I was sort of meant as a glue between them. It can also be that children are used no, to, 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 um, to, to connect the, the, the parents, because on those times, you could never have imagined to do a divorce. It was just not just not, especially when our father then became a mayor of the city. How can you divorce? So uh, even if our mother would have had this intuition that would be better to go away, but that just not, it was just not an option in those times. Now people think oh, it's normal to divorce. Then it was not. And it's only how long time, 50 years ago or so. So it really yeah. has changed a lot, a really lot. I mean, even for now, for a lot of people, it's still difficult. Yeah, I, I said whole marriage thing obviously has changed, but there's still a lot of people which feel whatever. I said you have children, you have to stay. I mean, a lot of people stay in marriages because they feel they need to, or, you know. Yeah, make it when work. there is a good reason for it, and children often are a good reason to stay together, at least for a certain you know, amount of time. Maybe, uh, maybe not. I mean, that can be it really depends. debated. It depends. Yeah, because I, I feel today, kids pick up way more on the underlying stuff than on oh, what we did. We certainly there. did. 
but you still you, you have to, 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 to see what is better, you know, if you are uh, uh, picking up the stuff, but you still have both parents there. I remember how good it was to, when father was sitting and correcting his, his letters and I could uh, uh, um, climb up his big chair. And, we all uh, did the chair climbing. It's a miracle yeah. that the chair survived. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Uh, so if he wasn't there, it would have been, we, we would have missed something. So I, I think it was good uh, that, that our parents were together. Well, I think what we, we, we know what happened when he passed away. Like we basically, as a family, were not functioning anymore. You know, we, I mean, we're not really functioning before for other inner familiar uh, dynamics, which I don't want to go in now. We can do that in an extra session. But uh, what was then the case when father had cancer? Then there was a year where mother and father finally were sort of connected because mother was bitter before because she was sort of a pre feminist, um, pushing all her desperation on the fact that the man didn't make her happy, let's say, you know? And when there was the fear that she would lose him, then they became into, into better contact. And this was amazing. I mean, at least that they had a, a year of, 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 I think a deeper understanding of, of their relationship and their being together and who the other one was. Without this uh, illness, they wouldn't have had that. And, mother wouldn't have had the push to become autonomous because she hid behind father. She said she cannot do anything and blah, blah. Also, in my opinion, she was the boss in the family, the absolute boss. But she thought it's, um, she is unable to do things. And when he wasn't there anymore, she had to, <laughs> to decide to do something. And she did. And she went into his footsteps. No? She became political and did this... Uh, campaigns for uh, collecting rubbish and separating plastic from paper and all the things. That, that was in the in this early 80s or late 70s. So, And she came to you, to America. And I remember when m me and my first husband, we brought her to the airport in Frankfurt. She was so afraid, so fearful. And we tried to, you know, explain everything to her. And she did it. And from there on, she became autonomous, which she never would have done in the marriage. But I'm sure not because our father would have hindered her, but no. because she thought that's not, her that's place. not what you do in, in right. the, right. you know, so. And I think that that happens a lot in, in like whatever we want to call traditional families, you know, yes. where the, the male is kind of on the outside, the person running the, you know, whatever, but it's the women who are ruling from, from, you know, the, and they are not the even aware. The, they are not yeah. even aware that they are the bosses and that the men right, to do cultures uh, they are, but it's, it's mm -hmm. a limited sphere, you know? Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I mean, it's looking at all of that. I feel like a great sadness. I think I, I like, as I was writing, I, just kind of felt this sadness of so much missed potential and so much, you know, unhappiness, which really didn't need to be there. And yeah, so, and I think that that kind of is like an application to today too, because like, I mean, we're still alive <laughs> and there's uh, still like um, this time of, what was a good part of the things we experienced? Because I think there was a lot of good parts, you know, because I, I feel like, like I already mentioned, we have so much just like physical knowledge and practical knowledge. A lot of people don't have anymore. And in the oh, short no. time from then, because that's really kind of our lifespan is when the crazy ass uh, industrial revolution really took took um, a turn for being as destructive as it is now, you know, where, yeah, where we have 
and stuff. Yeah, but we have managed to just create so much trash and so much uh, exhaust and so much that we're actually really endangering ourselves. And I have friends which are convinced that in 12 years, the shit is going to hit the fan. Mm-hmm. And we all better know survival skills or else, you know. Oh, we still do that. I, I think often that's also the reason maybe why I'm still here in the countryside, because here you could survive and we know how to make marmalade. We know how to, you know, many things we still know. And we don't need every, uh, every day or every week a new cloth. We can redo, especially you, uh, um, so sewing is it sewing yeah sewing. yeah uh, things so we have a lot of survival skills still which came out of the experience of the after war where things were not there i remember you had to wear my stuff uh, because you were younger and i often got it from somebody else you know as we, when we were kids later not right. when we were teens, mm. then we had also our own stuff but as kids it was, you know, it, dresses and clothing was used five, six, seven times. So it was normal. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> I'm still loving the hand-me-downs. It's the best way to shop. Free <laughs> and lots of variety. <laughs> yeah. And, and yeah. I still have preserved this thing of saving, saving stuff, not abusing and not uh, over, you know, not throwing away stuff. Yeah, which is a real problem when a lot of things are coming into your house. I mean, I'm definitely a very much a proponent of uh, zero waste, which is pretty much impossible because even like, for example, I buy milk in a a glass bottle where I can Mm -hmm. return the glass bottle and it's not available everywhere. And there's maybe one company which does that. But it still comes with a plastic lid and a plastic band to hold the lid, yeah, which I will put in the recycle, but I have no way of knowing if it actually gets recycled or if it ends up in, in the trash, you know. And just so many things where even if you're very conscientious <clears throat> about it, it's it's pretty much impossible. It is so, impossible. There are so I, many things which here, for instance, I have a dried, dried plum container. Up to maybe half a year ago, the container was still of paper, re- reinforced paper, and the lid was of plastic. Now, lately, I bought it again, and now everything is plastic. And as if we hadn't known that for 30 years, that we have to to stop Uh-oh. using plastic. It's ever more, you, you hardly get anything without plastic, no? And here even in, in Germany, it's better. They take back the plastic uh, bottles for water and so on. But here they don't take it back. They throw it in somewhere, you know, psh, away. Uh, am I still on your screen? Because yes, you, you are. Just disappeared. You are. Like I didn't touch anything. Yeah, and these I have are the com- wonders. The wonders of the computers. You are still here. I see that. I have a completely different screen and I have like no idea how to get back into our conversation. But to tell you the truth, I have been Mm -hmm. having voice problems for a long time now in my, my, I just feel like it's getting hoarser. So Mm -hmm. maybe we should stop for today. Okay. So the main uh, thing today was Tande Mayana and traditional way of uh, Tante Mayane, Tante Erika. Tante Erika, uh, you wishing, you wishing yeah, yeah. it was Tante Mayane. <laughs> Traditional ways of, of being. And I think we will come back again because um, it may be also to explore what it did with us and how yeah. we slowly can go out and what is good in the traditional way of being and what is not good. One, the last thing we have discovered, what was good is not to throw things away easily. So that was certainly- Which can also be bad because then you can be a hoarder. And <laughs> yeah, but you didn't have the money to hoard, you know, so yeah. difficult. <laughs> okay, so yeah. that was the second episode of Exploring Post-War Germany. <laughs> Yeah, in a sense, or really us. <laughs> yeah, really, uh, from a personal point of view. But I think, and I will do that uh, going on to to give some also some theoretical framework a little bit to this, as I did already in talking about the levels of development, which we in our generation have 
going through about six, you know, and this is quite a bit. <laughs> While our yeah. mother, she stayed in with four, you know, she stopped at the fourth level. So, so that's from people. the integral uh, background? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so okay. it well, explains a lot and that's uh, good. So anyway, uh, let's... Well, I see you Sunday. It's a family call then. Okay, so we can also invite them to be part of this uh, show. Absolutely. Okay. And who Absolutely. will watch that, reach out to us if you are interested in personal autobiographic oh, stories. Now I found it again. Okay. Cool. Okay. Take care. <laughs> bye. Yeah. Okay. Bye-bye.